Since the terrorist attacks of September 11th, the United States military is developing stronger measures to ensure the country's protection from airborne threats. Based on that attack and, and the way our military is shaped, we had to go ahead and develop new ways, new tactics, techniques, and procedures to defend the homeland. One of those is going to be the J-Diamond concept. Uh, the J-Diamond exercise, J-Diamond stands for Joint Deployable Integrated Air and Missile Defense, is a first of its kind exercise uh, primarily focused on the NORAD uh, Aerospace Defense Command mission set and the NORTHCOM mission set to integrate both the homeland air and cruise missile defense with ballistic missile defense deployable. It's a huge opportunity to bring all the services together in a true joint role to look at the air defense and air sovereignty processes that work within the uh, continental United States. Communication is vital between the different services for the success of Vigilant Shield. I'm working satellite communications on the SATCOM side. My job is we set up the dish, we pull down all the like nipper net, zipper net, radar feeds from uh, from Northwest Virginia, the headquarters. You know, we provide the entire site, all the uh, secure internet, uh, non-secure internet, secure phones. We can have this thing packed up, put away in an hour, or put up in an hour. We are the backbone of communications for this entire exercise. Uh, infrastructure is always tr a, a problem, an issue early on, but we've been very lucky. Uh, key, key professionals in those arenas have helped us out a lot. The hard part to do is get the digits flow correctly. Uh, get all the smart communications guys and the smart computer network guys, get them together because languages differ in the different services sometimes, and that's the real, uh, that's the real hard part to do in a short uh, duration environment. Clear communication is also critical for the Patriot missile system. Basically our responsibility is against air breathing threats and uh, tactical ballistical missiles and arms which are basically anti-radiation uh, missiles that would be subject to look at our radar and try and take it out. Right behind me I have my battery command post and they actually have a uh, forward observing picture beyond what my radar could see. They're responsible for advanced warning. So basically they're looking for anything suspicious that qualifies as an actual threat. Uh, I think everybody's pretty appreciative of how well Patriot has worked here. It's good to kind of get around other people and see how, how they kind of operate and to come together and know that one, we're all on the same team and we're you know, trying to shoot for a common mission. In addition, the Marine Corps tried out an experimental piece of equipment called the Mobile Optical Radar and Sensor System, along with the Stinger Slew to Q. Sure. So what we do is we take the L-Star feed uh, up there as a standalone system we bring that into our uh, mobile sensor control system and we pick our target of interest. Provides better situational awareness for the gunner and uh, gets, them on, uh, gets them on track a lot sooner than just having to look with the eyeball out there. Basically, it's like an Avenger. It cues them on the target, but it's man portable. The Avenger is a portable short-range air defense system that is capable of firing eight Stinger missiles at any aerial or land-based target. Its crew receives coordinates from command authority on the location and number of enemy threats. To make sure the equipment operates properly, the military has utilized a small civilian aircraft to simulate a cruise missile. Well, first of all, the SMART ones, that stands for Small Manned Aerial Radar Target Model 1. Uh, it describes exactly what we're, what we're doing here. It's a small airplane, it's manned, don't be shooting at me. <laughs> and it's a radar target. They developed this airplane to be more stealth. We can fly extremely precise courses. This airplane is mapped to the nth degree by the military, so they know exactly what it looks like through all kinds of different frequencies of radar, all different polarizations, complete 360 around that airplane. They know what this airplane should look like on the radar, which is great for a testing vehicle because depending upon what our warfighters are actually seeing, we know what they should see if the equipment works it perfectly. So we can measure against a perfect target. We've got C-21s, uh, BD-5s, and, and some other targets uh, out there. Huge involvement from the Navy and Air Force on a blue and red air, both with the F-A-18 Hornets, the F-15s, and the F-16s. Uh, most of us have been around for a while. Most of us were around at 9-11. And uh, this, the, the Vigilant Shield exercises 
or in response to better our defense capabilities within uh, the homeland. We do the air defense mission across the uh, CONUS region uh, when warranted, and we're just so much more proficient in the, our practices and processes from the top down to the tactical level. And that's what I see and get out of this is the huge advancements we've made from the COCOM down after 9-11. These advancements and capabilities will enhance Homeland Defense and the tactics, techniques and procedures are applicable for OCONUS. We'll take the lessons learned here in uh, Key West Naval Air Station for Jay Diamond and we'll move forward with those through a three-year joint test, which will involve better technology and better processes and the uh, doctrine to be able to support this uh, on a moment's notice. We operate on a very austere budget, and everybody's gone the extra mile to make this a success. I mean, it's been a, a, a great learning exercise for us, but it's also been a great bonding exercise between all the services and the interagencies.